you just got to get in. And what I like to say is get in and drive like a fast car. It looks like it's going slow when it's just sitting there. But when you get in, the wow factor hits you. It is simple. It is easily accessed. It is simple to understand and simple to earn income. You can use this income that you receive to purchase things or cash out to dollars. This token is an asset and utility token. No more useless tokens and coins because there are so many out there. That's what people have a hard time understanding is who can they go to? Where can they trust? And, and what coin and token is the best for them? This is definitely the one. Bank gonna get you. Bank gonna take you. B-I-O-S gonna get you. They're looking right at you. Better go digital. Crypto. These credit card debt gonna get you. Bank gonna take you. They're looking right at you. Better go digital. Crypto. Crypto. This was a Crypto Moment by Aaron Moffitt. Hi guys, welcome. We are here several months later, many months later. If you don't recall, my friend and I, Mr. Eric Carter, last went live on January 12th of 2021. And now he's back July 19th for a second go around. So welcome, Eric. Glad you're here. Hey, I'm glad to be here, man. How are you? Man, well, I'm blessed, and I talk about that all the time, but the exciting thing is we get to talk about not just me mentioning things that everybody keeps hearing, but they get to hear it from somebody else on my channel, which is funny because when we did this in January, we were just getting started in the crypto business together, and we were talking about things that half of the stuff I didn't even know. You sound like yep. you knew what you're talking about, but half the stuff I didn't know. Yeah, but now you know the other half. How you feel about that? Yeah, now that I know how this business and this company is working and I get on all those these Saturday calls that we have it's a uh, pretty phenomenal pretty phenomenal more than even then pretty I was excited back then but I'll tell you what I didn't know a thing about crypto but it turns out I don't have to know everything about crypto to bring in some good income but I, I'll, I'll talk about that one of the things that you mentioned recently in a video that you did is the running aspect when you were in the military. Do you mind sharing that story again? And I want to relate back with you on that. Man, that was a that was a horrible story. It's uh, <laughs> it gets I mean, I, 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 I do get it, but it was it was it was a horrible time, a horrible experience for me. I, uh, you know, me being an inner city kid, I didn't play any sports growing up, so I didn't really know the whole aspect, I guess, of being physical, being athletic, and then winning. I didn't get that. So I joined the Marine Corps in 1986. And my first day there, they started making me run. And I don't mean just like run to the block, run up to the, from one end of the basketball court to another. They wanted me to run for miles. Well, I had never done that before. Never, ever done that before. So the entire time, my, my heart was beating fast. My chest was beating. I had snot running out my nose. And I was probably the worst example of a Marine you could be. I, I was so bad that people behind me was kicking me in my back to make me go faster. They were dragging me by my, the collar of my, my shirt to make me run faster. And I'm dragging my feet. And it happened over and over and over consistently. And then I'm thinking that I gave every, I was given everything I got, had nothing left. And I was just so frustrated with this. This is about eight weeks in the boot camp. So frustrated with it that I said, you know what, I need to show them that I can't go any further and that I've been giving it all I got. So we had just finished a three mile run where I was completely exhausted, thinking I'm about to fail and pass out, running on the beach in combat boots. When my drill instructor said, uh, now we're gonna do wind sprints. 
I want you to run from this end of the football field to that end of the football field. And I'm saying, man, are they crazy? I don't have anything left. Didn't they see how badly they had to drag me? <laughs> so I said, I'm gonna <laughs> So I said, I'm gonna show them. I'm gonna show them I've got nothing left in me. And I'm just gonna run as hard as I could till I pass out so they know I was giving it my all. And uh he said, Go. So I took off like a bat out of hell. Aaron, I took off <laughs> running faster than I think I ever did in my life. And I beat everybody down to the end zone. And then uh, I'm exhausted. I didn't die yet. I was. I, I knew they knew CPR, and if I got in trouble, they would help me <laughs> out. Get ready. You'll live. So uh, I'll, I'll live, right? So at least that was the plan. And uh, when I got to the, when I got down to the end zone, he's like, "Okay, now come on back." And I was like, "Is he freaking kidding me? Didn't he just see <laughs> that they ran me like five miles on the beach and I almost passed out in the end zone?" So I said, well, let me do it again. I've got to show them because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fail. And uh, about three quarters of the way to the end zone when I was with the earshot of him screaming, he said, there you go, Carter. I know you've been sandbagging and holding back this whole time. <laughs> and I still beat everybody to the other end zone. And when I got there, I was thinking to myself, I didn't die. I, I didn't pass out. I, I didn't fail at this. I've been quitting on myself for way too long. I've been quitting prematurely rather than put myself through any potential suffering or pain or discomfort. And at that point, I got it. It kind of stuck in my mind is that I could do anything, honestly. And uh, that's another story. And I, I, I learned from that experience that I could do anything. And from there, I went on, I was, I went in boot camp for for your listeners to be legal administration i wanted a nice cushy office job in air conditioning so i could be a lawyer like my dad and ronald reagan bombed libya while i was in boot camp and we all became infantry i became an 0331 machine gunner for those of you guys who are prior service uh thank you for your service to 0331 machine gunner they gave me an 18 and a half pound machine gun 33 pounds worth of ammunition and i weighed all of about a buck 60 myself soaking wet mm. and I was like there's no freaking way but they made me a machine gunner and I took off on that I excelled in it I won a machine gun competition first Marine Corps uh, first Mardu, um with that and then every single weapon they gave me I fired expert with it and I ended up going to Marine uh, Scout Sniper School became an 8541 Scout Sniper and uh, I never would have done that if I had not pushed myself to see what I could really do. And at that point, I knew that it was time for me to quit. It was time for me to quit quitting on myself. And I've taken that with me for the rest of my life. And so what I said out when I say that uh, I, I really had to push through that, I really had to push through that. And I didn't have a father figure making me push through those things. I didn't have any coach or super athletes making me push through those things. But once I learned that I could do more than what I had been doing, I started doing more of everything. That is a phenomenal story, and it made me start remembering some of my running, biking, racing stories. And so that's why I titled this Running the Race, because there's something- Yeah, you've been like a marathon runner. Yeah, stuff, I was, right? I was a marathon runner. And before I was a marathon runner, I raced bicycles in college, so road bikes. Wow. So in, uh, in a particular race, when you draft, just to kind of explain how the group racing works, this isn't a single person race. You're working with a group. And so the way that, that works, works is you're all huddled, huddled together in a group, in a group together, together and you draft off of each other. And if you fall off that group, you're probably done for. You're not going to be able to catch up to the group. You're done with the race. You're not going to get first, second, third, or even 10th place. So this is a group of about 20 women at the time. And, and different, different teams. teams. So, so you've got, got your own team, team and your own team's supposed to help you out. Well, my teammate fell off and she yelled at me. She's like, I fell off. Oh my gosh. So I go back to her and we draft each other. So just 30 seconds changing places, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds to get back on because that gives you that, just that small little break gives you enough power to get back up and pull much, much harder than if you were just trying to catch up to the team. You'd never catch them. So, so her and I pulled each other all the way back to the team, and then we hit a corner a little bit later, got back on, hit a corner, and she dropped me. She didn't come help me. 
and I was furious, furious, furious. And not being that strong of a biker, more of a runner, you know, I didn't think I would ever get a place or anything, but I was so furious with this girl for dropping me that the next day we had two more races. We had what, uh, I can't remember what it was called anymore, but it's just a straight out and back. And then we have what's called a criterion where you just loop and loop and loop and loop for 40 minutes. And you still place. It depends on, like, they keep track of how many loops you do. And so uh, instead of being a team player, I left, I dropped her on both races so hard. And my, the, the guys on the team, they're like, they go, uh, what was going on? Because I didn't really tell anybody why I was, that I was, how mad I was because, you know, I knew that was a little bit petty. But I, a little bit. I had so much more in me than I realized that my anger fueled my skill the next day and yes team time trial thank you karen brilliant um they that i killed it and the guys on the team are like what was going on out there aaron you were blowing it up and they're like you what what happened between yesterday and today i'm like i don't know i just was just feeling it so that that was just another instance of and it wasn't that i didn't think i could do it so much as i had no idea with the right motivation, just how much I could could push through a right. race, and it wasn't very not it was petty I to leave that That's girl okay. behind. Some, but, sometimes pettiness gives you a sense of purpose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I learned what you learned is that I certainly had way more in me, and I think that we feel that way sometimes when we, especially when we're on our own in these businesses, we're on our own in a home based business or uh, even if it's a brick and mortar business. If we're running the show, it's, and you can tell me more on this, what you think, but it can get frustrating. You can get down on yourself. You can start to think, I'm not good at this. I don't know what I'm doing. I should have never gotten into this. And it's easy to give up, right? It's easy to go, I can't do this. I'm going to die doing this, or I'm just never going to make it. And so I'm going to give up before I even suffer those consequences. And I think that's really why you were telling that story, wouldn't you say? I I, I would. You know, I, I ideally... We should all know what our limit is, ideally. In an ideal world, we should know exactly what our limit is. But the reality is we don't. And we'll never know that unless we try, and we try hard and give it our all. And I was fortunate to be placed in a position where, just like you, I was angry. And my anger uh, kind of kind of fueled my success. Your anger fueled your success. We shouldn't have to get angry to do something and prove, right. something, and prove something to somebody, but we do. That's part of our nature, I think, as human beings. That's some motivation, and then there's also some motivation of the uh, positive re- reward, like seeing our our work be a job well done. That can also be reinforcement. And one of my favorite quotes is, "Most people never run long enough on their first win to get a second. If you can man, I love that you quote you put that on your Facebook page. I thought that was amazing. Yeah, I don't know who said it because, as a runner, it was on a wall of the of the YMCA that I used to run m- multiple miles on their treadmills, and it was just on the wall, and it said unknown. So I don't know whoever said it, but it's so perfect because if you can't go long enough and you say, I'm too tired, I, I can't do it, you haven't reached that second win because that second win goes forever. And so right. you've got to run longer. you got to go the distance a little bit further than it feels like you can. And on those days, you have days you feel like giving up, don't you? Always, always. I, I just I just don't do it because giving up becomes a habit. Yeah. Well, I have days where I worry. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm not doing this right. I'm not doing this well or whatever. And what am I going to do? And then I'm like, oh, right. no, I'm just going to keep doing it. I'm just going to keep going. Right. And we're speaking specifically right now. We're both working a, a cryptocurrency business, which has been yeah. extremely has treated us extremely well. But we've done other businesses like this. It's not the first time like you've run a business or had a home-based business, right? It's it's not. But I will tell you the difference for me in this is in this one is that because I've had some experience in the past, I said to myself, "I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do more," and then that's that Marine Corps attitude in me. I said I was gonna do more this time than I've ever done before. I was gonna make this one uh, something that had the Eric flag on it, the easy flag on it and everybody would know my name. And I sat out with that purpose the day that I got started. And because I started out with the end in mind, I put in a lot more effort than I would have if I just wanted to kind of put my toe in the water to see if the water's cold, then put my legs in there until I got used to it, 
and then finally go for a lap or two. No, I, I dived right in and I started going for a record. I, I, I really wanted to do it because I knew, based upon everything that I've seen, that this vehicle has potential to not just change my life, but my daughter, she's 13 years old, and I wanted to make sure that I was giving it everything I had because she deserved that. So, so what, what would you, you tell somebody who is already in this crypto business that says, I don't know what I'm doing and I need help and I, I can't do this? Because I mean, that's a lot of people. A lot of people kind of feel that way. They get to that. I felt that way. But what would you say if they're already in the cryptocurrency, they're already in the business of world crypto life, and we'll get to what people who aren't, but people who are, if they're like, you know, I don't understand. Nobody wants to listen to me. Maybe I'm just doing this wrong. What would you say to those people? You know, my, my, my solution for all that thing is is to put 100 numbers on a, on a board, 100 numbers on a board. And every time you reach out and talk to someone, not by text, not by email, but actually uh, getting on the phone with them, and they tell you no, cross off one of those numbers. And don't make your goal to get a certain number of uh, phone calls in per day, although you should. The goal is to get all 100 of those numbers crossed off your board. That's 100 people that would have told you no. And I can pretty much assure you, although I can't guarantee you, that I can uh, count on the number of hand, um, the number of fingers I got on both hands the number of people have actually done that and have not filled, fulfilled their dreams with it. Because it's almost impossible. By the time you get to that 100th person, you're gonna be good at your conversation. Right. By the time you get to that converse, that 100th person, you're gonna have had some successes. Right. And for, for me, what I do, if I'm ever discouraged about something, I go the 100th, and then as soon as somebody tells me yes, I start my 100th all over again, right. and I keep going. And it's so much more easy, I think, to look at something that's that's not you. It's a physical board. It's a physical piece of paper or whatever it is. Maybe it's a couple of matchsticks that you're writing down every time you get a no till you get that total 100. That it doesn't feel nearly as personal. And because it doesn't feel nearly as personal, you understand real quickly that they're not saying no to you. Right? They're still your friend. They still love you. Right. They're still your sister, your brother, your parent. They still love you. They're just saying no to the opportunity. And what they're saying is that they, they're saying no right now. You know, things change, circumstances yeah, change. That's true. And when they do, as long as you're not one of those people who make the business everything and the person nothing, as long as you're not one of those people, when the opportunity comes for them, when things change in their life, when the timing is better in their life, and you're still doing what you started doing, they'll come back around, notice that you haven't quit. And they'll want to partner up with us. Yeah. yeah. And also, one of the things when I started seeing how, uh, so just to clarify to everybody, and everybody, I've talked about World Crypto Life so many times. So if you haven't heard it and you're listening, that's kind of crazy. But just in case, if there's somebody that hasn't heard about it, this is a crypto venture that pays generously, very generously, for just referring people to the business to buy a very valuable crypto. It's not. And un, it's not it's not a useless cryptocurrency. It's a very useful cryptocurrency. It's a utility token, and it's based in the U.S. in Wyoming, which is a big deal. I have an article if anyone needs it that shows why Wyoming is so important when it comes to legislation for cryptocurrency and why coins and tokens want to be there. And I think there's only maybe five that are actually registered in the state of Wyoming. And so when when I got started with Eric and knew nothing, I quickly saw the, the fruits of the end of this business and the efforts. And because of the generous income, I've been telling everyone. I mean, I became that person I never thought I'd be. I'm like in the grocery store, I'm like, you do crypto? <laughs> are you into crypto? I'm sitting at the this uh, where Bonnie works at this bar and I look at the guy next to me who's just chit chatting away with some other guy. As soon as he turns to say hi to me, I go, so you into crypto? He's like, oh my gosh, I'm, I am. I'm so glad you asked. What What are you doing? This is what people tend to do more often than not when I bring up crypto. When I walk to my neighbor's houses, I said, you guys got to hear about this crypto. I mean, I don't just walk to my neighbor's houses and start chit chatting on usually, but I but I do enough that that wasn't weird to them. But you know, and a lot of them said no, but a, lo a lot of people said yes. In fact, so many people said yes that you and I have both reached a ranking where uh, we, have we have earned, earned bonuses. bonuses. We, we have earned, earned a, a super, super income. income. We've, We've earned, 
you know, I'll tell uh, about, about what, what I've earned, earned which is in g- general about $35,000, but in, in, in six, six months. months. How much have you earned in general in six months with this company, World Crypto Life? Um, I'm, prom- I'm, pr- I'm probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about 150000 That is unbelievable. And, it, and I remember first talking to you in the beginning, and I go, this feels unreal, and you just laughed and you agreed with me. You're like, it does feel <laughs> unreal. <laughs> It is, and again, it's because we get paid every single day. It's not, you know, one of the reasons why people drop off opportunities like this is because they can't get paid fast enough. Right. So right. they have something that's built into most of these companies called a fast start. And if you do and you qualify for that fast start, you typically get a check for that within 30 days. Right. Because they know if they don't have your attention in 30 days, you're not going to want to continue to do it for another 30 days. Well... If you get started today, today is what, Monday, July 19th? Yeah. And it's only 3 o'clock in the afternoon? You've got until midnight to make something happen. Yeah. And you get paid for it tomorrow when you wake up. Right. And so that belief check is not 30 days down the road. That belief check is, is tomorrow. And since I learned from other opportunities what motivates people and is seeing success right out the gate, nothing motivates you, nothing assures you that you've achieved success like getting a paycheck within 24 hours so if you get paid within 24 hours what do you want to do the next 24 hours you want to do it again and once i realized that and added to the psychology behind what we're doing i said man this is a huge opportunity and more important than that aaron six months ago we were still dealing with COVID. we didn't know what was going to happen with our economy we had uh just had a a a a tough election going on uh nationally and we didn't know what was going to happen with the United States, what was going to happen with our economy, what was going to happen. Were we able to go back to work? Were we not going to do it next year? And there's so many people that was struggling to pay bills. They said, Eric, I don't, I don't have a lot of money to try this, but I can try it with $100 and right. I can reach out to a few of my friends with $100. And they did that. And then they made some money, then they got the $500 package, then they made a little bit more and they got the $1,000 package. And then they realized that they don't have to go back to work. Yeah. And I've, and, and I've got, you know, you're, you're one of those people, but I've got several stories of that, of people who have done the same thing. They started with all they could, $100 or $500, and they reached out to other people in the same situation with $100 and $500. And we were just all on Zooms and, and on Skypes and doing this kind of stuff. And, man, suddenly we've got this entire army of people, you and I who are out there crypto advocates and they've been making money and they're helping other people make money and their lives are changing and they're living their dreams a lot faster. You just bought a brand, well, not a brand new bus, but a brand new to you bus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a big deal. You know, one of the things that you said your dad said, which I'll never forget is, if you went to bed broke, why did you go to bed? Right, or why did you go to sleep? That is one of my favorite quotes ever that I I just want (laughs) to say all the time because I'm like, that, that is the best thing I've heard Maybe ever, because it's like, that's a good point. Like, if you're going to come, you know, maybe maybe people are complaining. I'm not saying that everyone can find a way before they go to sleep, but what a great point that that makes to say, well, what did you do before you went to bed then to try to change that? Did you do anything? Did you do, right. you know, and you're kind of like the same story with the dog sitting on the the nail in the, yep. in the shop that just lays on the same spot and then go, howls. Oh. Well, because he's worn down the spot and there's a nail, but it doesn't hurt him enough to move yet. He just lays there and howls. Right. You know, is is it when is it going to be enough to to want to make a change? And some people don't have that pain enough yet. They're just kind of coasting along just fine. And yet it's still kind of there. Like you said, there's people like, you know, I've offered this. People are like, oh, I'm out of work for this reason, that reason, whether it was COVID or whatever. And I, and I say, well, I have a job. And the sad part is, is a lot of times they think I'm not serious. And I'm like, well, I'm serious. And, I, and it's really good pay and you know some people get it some people obviously have gotten it because I wouldn't be where I am making having made 35 grand and you know over 600 people on my downline if if I hadn't you know people hadn't listened to me which I am so grateful that they did because you know who am I I don't know anything about crypto do you know in the beginning when I first started this I told people I said I'm buying crypto and they're like oh how does it work I go I have no idea but I'm buying it what well, you I, should I do, do a little bit but not a lot some <laughs> So I'm going to tell you and your audience now that we're six months into this. Yeah. But when I first started this, for all of you listeners out there in internet land, when I first started this, I knew a little bit about crypto, but not nearly enough. 
And I knew that the people that was coming on board with me to join me in this venture knew less about crypto than I did. So I said, guys, I'm going to do a crypto 101 education for you guys. Log on to my Zoom, 8 o'clock. Okay. Everybody said, great. They all agreed to sign on to it. I was like, holy shit, what am I going to do? <laughs> so I went to uh, I went to Barnes & Noble and I grabbed the book, which is Cryptocurrency for Dummies. <laughs> right? <laughs> And by three o'clock in the afternoon, I had finished the book. I highlighted the, the key points on it. And from three o'clock to 7.30 p.m., I created the PowerPoint presentation that everybody saw at eight o'clock. And they all felt like it was phenomenal. Oh, and man. it all gave them the confidence to go. <laughs> it all gave them the confidence to want to move forward. And so you, you don't have to know a lot about crypto. Right. You just have to know the basics. Yeah. And all I taught was the basics, the story between uh, Satoshi Nakamoto and how Bitcoin started, the collapse of the dollar, and those types of things. And uh, I had to tell, had to educate people that crypto is not your enemy. Right. Right. It's not. The enemy is the dollar. So if you're in gold, you're in silver. God bless you. Crypto is also not the enemy. Right. It's there to protect you against the dollar. The thing is, I'm 54, guys. So I'm a, I'm I'm getting to be an old man. I've got more time behind me than I've got in front of me. And I know that th there's no Kio account, checking account, savings account, IRA, 401k, that's going to give me the kind of money that I need to be able to retire on in just a few years when my hips give up, when I need a walker, mm -hmm. when getting up early in the morning to be a greeter at Walmart is anathema to my nature. And the only thing that I know that can get me there is crypto. I was just looking, and I'll, I, if I can share it, I'll share it, but. If I can, it's okay too. You mean like share your screen? Because you can't can share, share your screen, screen from Skype. Skype. No, I don't have it on my screen. I'm just oh. gonna hold it up. Maybe can people kind of see it. It's so I did focusing. a quick. It's okay. I did a quick comparison between our ERC20 working utility and the and the BNB I the ERC20 working utility. They started July 20, 2017. We started November 2020. They're in the Binance Exchange. We're in the IM Exchange. They're in the Cayman Islands, by the way. Not and the U.S. We're, not the U.S. Right. And we're in the state of Wyoming. They've got. They had an ICO. Ours is technically not an ICO, although it's similar. It's an IEO, which is mm. initial exchange offering. Today, on their 40th anniversary, they're priced over $300 per coin. They started at about 10 cents. Did you say fourth anniversary? anniversary? Four year anniversary. Four year. Right. Yep. They went from 10 cents each to $300 in four years. Now I've got somebody on my team, I'm not gonna mention their names, but they have accumulated 300,000 IMC tokens. Hmm. Wow, I bet I, I, bet I know, know who it is. is. If they've accumulated, <laughs> you might, if they've accumulated 300 IMC tokens and it ends up being $300 like the BNB token, right. which is the one we're most similar, they're sitting on $90 million in four years. Now again, when you're when you're my age, you don't have time for green bananas and slow playing records, <laughs> right? How else are you going to get there? Cryptocurrency is not a guarantee that you'll get there, but it is an opportunity that you might. I have thirty two thousand, uh, thirty two thousand and change on the on the tokens. Did you say eight hundred dollars? Or I said three hundred dollars. Three hundred. I think it's just three hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Thirty-two. Which I think, which I think, personally, is a realistic number. That'd be nine million seven hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. for me. In four years. Yeah, I take that because okay. I'm forty-two right now. I'll only be forty-eight. See? No, forty-six. <laughs> I can't do math. <laughs> That's why I have a calculator. <laughs> oh, yeah. let me. And you know, and you know what, Aaron? You know what? Yeah. The next four years is coming regardless. Yeah, it is. God willing. So you can either you can either live out those next four years and watch your coin rise to what B and B did, or you can sit back, relax, and watch it happen happen to other people. That's right. what I want people to take away from this. Again, it's not a guarantee you're gonna get there, but it's a chance. It's an opportunity, and you only get one shot, one opportunity in life. This might be yours. Even if I didn't make the income that I've made. I still see the potential in this token highly for many, many reasons. And not just the G point, there's not just the being able to shop online like G point market, but like you said, for these other reasons, it's a real token on a real exchange in Wyoming with the best legislation anywhere. 
that should be a huge uh, that should just be a huge no brainer to a lot of people. And I think it has been. I, in fact, I have a friend in Missoula, the guy that I went Bigfoot searching with, and that's what he said he, when he heard it was in Mon or in Wyoming. He was like, "Oh, well, yeah, I want to get as much of that as I can." And you know, he's gonna start. Oh. He starts at the hundred, and he's going up and doing what I did. I started at the hundred, went up to five hundred, and just kept. And and what that does for us to rank up like that is. It pays to rank up because we earn more income if people join us. And then we earn more bonus tokens and stuff too. The, what you and I earned with, I didn't even know we were gonna earn this. I've never done this. I've never ever won a trip anywhere. But what you and I, I earned without even knowing we were going to get this is a trip to Cancun, all expenses paid. Yep. And. That is amazing to me because I've done other home-based businesses where I've tried to get in on competitions. I know I'm in a competition and I do pretty well. I've won, I've won things, but not the tr not a trip somewhere. And I'm like, yeah, I'm never going to do that. Well, I happened to get my uh, passport last September. And so this is all falling into place if you ask me. I got my passport. I've got a trip to Cancun, all expenses paid for the trip and the food. And I mean, that means the food's paid for. You know, I don't. The drinks are paid for. The room is paid for. I mean, I'm gonna want some money for some trinkets and things like that, souvenirs. But that's amazing to me. I can't. It, it's blowing my mind. Yeah. All you'll have to do is take money down there for tips, and really, even the tips are included. But if you see somebody that gives you exceptional service, yeah, you can tip them. Which I probably would be like, <laughs> it's all crypto. Crypto paid for this. Here you go. <laughs> Get in yep, on it. That's true. That's true. And, and maybe even while we're down there, some of those people who work inside the resorts in Mexico, they're making money to pay for their family. Maybe even one or two of those people will find their way into WCL somehow and change the direction of their life. Absolutely. And it's not hard. I'm not, I'm not doing anything more than I've done in any other network marketing or home-based business aspect. I'm not. The only difference is probably my enthusiasm is probably a little bit more you know up there. But also the fact that I'm I'm just so excited about I'm willing to tell more people, but I'm not doing hard work. I'm not like going okay. I gotta set aside 16 hours this week, and it's gonna be from this time to this time. And then that organized people just do that, and they're and they're good like that. But I'm not organized like that. So I just tell everybody, I go to the coffee shop. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm doing Bitcoin now, or not Bitcoin? Excuse me. I'm doing crypto now, and it's amazing. Oh yeah, uh, what should I buy? Are you buying Doge? And I'm like, no. <laughs> you know? Or if they oh. are. You know, if they are, who cares? I, I just tell people, these coins don't compete. You can buy whatever you want, and then you can buy this too. But I highly recommend you buy this as well. And even if you do nothing with it, that works. That still works out. In fact, I have a guy who came in at two grand, and he just asked me the other day, he goes, oh, I want to log in and look at everything. I go, yeah, here's the exchange. Here's your, you know, log in. And he's like, oh, yeah, cool. So right now, if I cashed out, I'd be getting like double. And I go, yeah, you'd be getting double. And he goes, that's really cool. He goes, but I'm the kind of person to keep sitting on it. I said, great, because we're going to want to probably stake those where we can earn interest off of that. And he's like, sounds good to me. I love that. He's just a guy that doesn't want to tell anybody, put in two grand, but he's excited to see that it's already doubled. It hasn't been that long for his right. money to double. Six months. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, it, it's funny. Now that we're six months old, there's people out there that's looking at us who know a lot about crypto. And we're, we're fortunate that uh, that a guy just signed up, he's one of the largest crypto influencers I'm in the United States. That up. And uh, he's, he is definitely on board. He's trying to qualify himself for the trip to Cancun and fly right. to 30 days. Right, because there's, there's still time. Gonna, there is still time. So if there's anybody in the Zoom that wants to figure out how to do that, I mean, you can certainly walk them through the process what's required. Right. But what's amazing to me is that here I am an amateur just reading a book on cryptocurrency <laughs> right. and dummies, trying to see if it's a good deal. In the meantime, it took him, once he saw it, it took him five minutes. Yeah. And his, his, his thing is like, Eric, this is a three to $500 coin. And I said, uh, you think it's gonna be three to 500? He says, easily. He says, there's other coins out there selling for 20 bucks, a hundred bucks, and they don't do nearly what this can do. And you guys are creating a population of users and hodlers. Mm -hmm wallet holders holders and he's like easily three to five hundred bucks and he says uh you know i'm buying a lot more and i'm telling everybody else on his on his youtube channel that he influences on and so so, so far about 75 75 people have joined from him in the last five days since yeah, saturday I what's today friday yeah, yeah today's yeah. monday so yeah 
Oh, today's Monday. Yeah. So, so 75 people since Saturday. Yeah, today's three only days. Monday. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. I put up a video, uh, just uh, just like uh, a couple other people have had, where he's talking about that, where he's coming into World, World Crypto Life. So if anyone wants to know, uh, that's Brandon Ivy, right? Yes. Yeah. Brandon Ivy. So I did put a video up uh, just before the bus video, and that's him talking about it, why he's doing World Crypto Life. This is a guy that like is coaches and educates people on cryptocurrencies, right? I mean, he knows. He is. A he, lot. He, he know he knows his stuff. Um, he took thirty dollars and turned it into a million dollars in about six months in the <laughs> cryptocurrency space. So he and understands it. He understands. It. And he loves the IMC token. He loves the IM exchange. He likes WCL provide the platform to educate people and let people earn a living in the short term while they're waiting for the coin to go up. So he's all about it because he wants to share and spread the wealth. But uh, he's also providing viable education on all cryptocurrency and all blockchain technology and everything right. so that we have access to that information too. That's powerful because education is key. Well, right, because, you know, when people... It doesn't mean they're going to go and buy other tokens or coins, but at least they understand ours compared to others. So, well, what is Bitcoin or what is Doge or what are these? And, and it, you know, I've had people get mad when I say, well, I think Doge is worthless. Well, I've made lots of income off of it. I'm like, That's great. That's cool. I'm not going to buy it because I don't gamble like that. I'm not going to get right. into something that I don't think has anything to back it up, except for right. that it was supposed to be a joke. And that's cool mm -hmm. that people made money off it. So I don't hate that. I'm just not, I'm not going to buy it. But I like knowing what it is. I like knowing that it's got nothing to back it so that if I do buy it, get out quick if it goes up. And if you really want to jump back in, maybe, you know, but I don't want, see, I don't do the market. If I was into that kind of lifestyle, then I would probably have been playing the markets. But I'd have to watch what it's doing, buy on the dip, and then sell, and then buy again. And, and I'm like, I don't want to know how to do that stuff. I just want to, you know, watch it grow like ours does. That, to yep. me, is is more important and then like you said this this token itself by itself without any of the income we've earned from referrals is valuable it's being utilized it's got on an exchange it's in wyoming there's so many reasons that and that they're trying to create a way to use this as currency which is what cryptocurrency was always intended to do not be a market asset but to actually be utilized right. as money and currency and to make it Correct. make us we can get away from the dollar because really, I want people, There, people are enslaved by the dollar. They're tethered to the dollar. There are so many people that don't even understand why gold and silver or crypto have value. They only understand dollar value. That is. And that's by design. The government don't want people that smart. Well, yeah, that would, that's why the centralized, this decentralized cryptocurrency has been problematic for the government. Why they sell you, you know, you get people like uh, Dave Ramsey. I think he's kind of almost co-intel sometimes because he'll say things like, don't buy gold and silver. Don't do that. And I'm like, why would Dave Ramsey tell people not to buy gold and silver? You know, well, you know, to, you got to get out of debt the way they want you to get out of debt. They want you to do these things that revolve around the dollar and not, not really know about money. But by the way, did you say you bought a kilo of gold? No, not yet. Oh, okay. No, no. The, the kilo of gold is going to be my, my five-star bonus to myself. Okay. Right? So there, between that and that, so I'm the bonuses, guys. I'm between my four-star bonus and my fifth-star bonus. If you combine both of those together, that's $70,000. Well, I'm going to make more than $70,000 on the road to those bonuses of $70,000 because right. of fast start paying daily pay. So I've said that as soon as I get that five-star bonus, I'm not going to have anything to do with it. I've already bought my dream car. I've got everything I need and want. So I'm not going to take $50,000 and put it into the bank. What am I going to do with that? Oh, gosh, no. Divers I'm going to diversify a little bit. I'm going to buy a kilo of gold because I always wanted one of that too. When you get to a certain point of making money, it's just it's just numbers on a page at that point, mm -hmm. right? If you got enough crypto, it's just numbers on a screen at that point. So I'm going to have plenty of that already because I'm going to have at least 125,000 IMC tokens also. Mm -hmm. And the kilo of gold sits about the size of two cell phones stacked on top of each other. Mm -hmm. And I just want to have one of those things. And because of WCL and the IMC token, I'll be able to get the things that I want. That's exactly right. That's called purchasing power. That is where you take those few dollars that you had, or maybe you have a lot of dollars, but you turn them into a lot more dollars 
so that you can buy more things. That's exactly how Mike Maloney described it when I very first heard him explaining what purchasing power is. He says, basically, you get to buy a lot more stuff later down the road because it increases how many dollars, it increases the about not the value of the dollar, but the value of the thing that you're dealing with, whether it's crypto or gold and silver, it's got the value, the dollar does not. And so as the dollar drops and those things remain, like gold and silver specifically, they remain the same. It's the value of the dollar that drops. Well, if you cash it in for dollars, you can buy more stuff, which if Correct. you know, you, you may not want to cash gold and silver in for dollars, but I always tell people, I said, you should have some to hold in case of an emergency, but you should have some for those things you want to get in the future. There's a guy I know paid for his daughter's wedding with gold. You know, it wasn't an emergency, but he was able to pay for a really beautiful thing that he doesn't regret. And he's not sitting there going, dang, I shouldn't have sold that gold. That was part of the reason he had it in the first place was because he could have yep. now afford things like that. Yep. I've got a buddy of mine whose grandfather left him a tub full of gold. Hmm. Wow. Not like not not like a bathtub, but like a like this right. huge box full of gold, mm -hmm. right? Which is probably about three feet wide, about a foot deep, about a foot and a half in uh, in length, right? This huge tub full of gold, and I was like, dude, you can go buy whatever you want to. He's like, I don't want to buy anything. I'm gonna give it to my kids. That's great. So. Yeah, so his grandfather gave it to his dad, I guess. His dad gave it to him. They're not even spending with it. They're just holding on to it. Yeah. They're already making a ton of fiat currency, a ton of cash, and got everything that they want already. They don't want to take gold, which has value, and turn around right. and sell it just to buy something like a stupid car that doesn't have any value that loses value because you're robbing from your kids when you do that. Right. Yeah, so. especially now if you can pay cash for it, and that kind of, which is what I'm trying to do from now on, then I'm gonna do things like that. So like the bus, I paid cash for. Well, I crypto bought mm -hmm. it, you know, which I but I turned it into what they accept, which is dollars, and right. I bought the and I bought the bus. And well, my car is worth about eighty thousand. Like, yeah, eighty thousand dollar car. And I didn't pay cash for it, but I made sure I had enough cash sitting between my various accounts that I could pay cash for it. Yeah. And and for me, that was that was the uh, the stress reliever, right? Because right. if I had to put like ten grand down on it and don't know where I'm going to get the next thousand dollar payment or fifteen hundred dollar payment on it, I would struggle. But as long as I know it's just sitting there anyway. That, right. Exactly. So, so basically, I'm saying like if if a person did want to cash in some of that, you know, it'd be for for things that could still build the family up. Like you know, my my children understand currency, so when they ask for when they ask to get paid. They, or if we're going to the store and they're like, do you have any money? I go, no, but I have currency. They're so used to that, that they even yep. they even correct themselves and say currency instead of money now. And so they're going to understand Good. dollars versus gold and versus crypto and that kind of stuff way better than I did. And way better, you know, I didn't even know about this stuff before four years ago, as you know. But we also are being able to take some of this, turn it back into dollars and do things we haven't been able to do. In fact, my girls just said, we've had a really busy summer. Yeah, we've been able to go on trips. We have another trip wow. planned. How is that? Wait, yeah. <laughs> to say that, you know, we've been able to do all these things together, go get the bus. I mean, that that was a thrill for them, to ride on a bus all the way five hours home from Missoula, Montana, back to Billings. Wow. They yeah. they loved that. And the bus actually runs like, it's it just not hard to drive. Unless you're in a small space. Don't get stuck in a small <laughs> space. But, but on, the, on the roads and on the highways, certainly easy to drive. But... Then we got another vacation and we're going to South Dakota for three days and I was able to afford a cabin. You know, this is stuff we we would, we always, we still did trips, but it was very, very super cheap trips. Anything I could do that didn't cost money, which is still smart. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying it's nice though, because this year we're able to do a little bit more. And so I am spending some of that currency. I am using it, but that's because it's creating and you should. memories for our family. And you know what? It's a lot easier to spend when you wake up every day to new money. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't, you so, don't worry so much. You don't don't worry so much. You don't, you're not worried about where the next one's coming from because it happens every day. I just uh, my my nephew died recently. He had cancer. Oh, I'm so sorry. And uh, up early 30 years old, they chopped off his arm about a year and a half ago, trying to save the cancer. Um, and it looked like it was in remission, but it wasn't. Between all the chemo and the radiation they gave him before they chopped his arm off, obviously re reduced his ability to fight when he came back. When he came back, he came back with a vengeance. 
and because of his thing with cancer and because of his youth, he doesn't have any life insurance at all. He's got a, uh, you know, he's, he has had a young son. My sister calls me up. She's crying. She's asking if she can borrow a thousand dollars from me, or a thousand dollars from everybody in the family, so she can, you know, give him the, the send off that she wanted to that he asked for. Because he didn't have any insurance, she didn't have the money. Mm -hmm. The rest of my family didn't have the money, so I shot her my first thousand dollars. She asked if I had any more about a week later because she was still struggling to come up with it. And I uh, shot her another 3500 bucks. And she says, Eric, you've already given me so much. I hate to ask you for any more. Can I borrow some? And I said, no, I'm not going to let you borrow anything. And I just sent her the rest of the money because I don't think she needed to worry about how she was going to bury him. Yeah. While she was burying him and how she was going to pay people back. Right? That's... The guy was like 31 years old, had a young, son, young son and a, and a brand new wife. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna let you worry. And fortunately, you know, the creator put me in a position where I've had this money that I can do something like that with. Right. So I don't really look at this as if it's mine to use. I look at it like a gift that I can share with others, and that gave me the opportunity to share that gift. You talked about buying a bus. Absolutely. Because you're not buying a bus as a trinket, you're buying a, a way to create more memories with your children. Mm -hmm. They just had a fantastic summer. They're gonna have a fantastic experience as you build that that bus. That's what that's what the true value of money should be: creating memories, right. and creating opportunities for others, right? And having the ability to help other people. So yeah, I made a lot of money, and it, and it sounds good on paper, but I, it's 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 really given me the opportunity just to help a lot of people that I wouldn't have had. The ability to, you, you know, the worst thing is when, when somebody asks you for money and you don't have it versus them ask you for money and they need it and you don't, right? Because I had it, I was able to help them as well. And I wouldn't have had that without WC. I wouldn't even have it without people like you, Aaron. I mean, you went to work. You're on my team. You put your head down, didn't understand it. You made sure that you did. You shared it with other people. And you've been able to bless a lot of other people too. And... Um, one day when we're sitting down at the beach in Cancun, we'll sit down and, and we're going to talk about all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, it's because it's not just about that. me and you, it's about this. Yes. I mean, I don't even drink, but I'd have a, a, I'd have a Sprite. <laughs> I'd get off my keto diet and have a Sprite with you while you drink a Mai Tai. A I Sprite. Know. I don't know if I do a Mai Tai. I don't drink liquor. I'm kind of uh, interesting that way. I only like beer and wine, so that's probably all I'll stick with. But I have a friend that said he'd be happy to join me. Just a friend. He's a, my longtime friend, uh, my also my landlord. He's the one that's taught, helped teach me how to build. So I've done house builds with him, and I've done demolition with him. And um, Sweet. Yeah, so that's why I even could begin to know what I'm doing. And I just kind of know the beginning, but I'm again, like crypto, I'm going to learn how I'm doing it as I go along because I'm just physically going to get into it and then I'm going to understand it just because I have to do it right then and there and make the mistakes. But anyway, he's like, well, I'd be happy to go to Cancun with you. I looked up the price flights. They were yeah. they were less than $1,000 for two of us to fly down there. So I was like, wow, this is a really affordable trip. Because so you're going to pay get, for my flight? Yeah. No. Is that the two of us? World Crypto Life is paying for yours. <laughs> And they're paying for some of mine too, but it, again, it's uh, we're buying the tickets and then they're reimbursing us a percentage depending yep. on your rank there. So I'm able to, I'm like, even if I was just fully paying for that, for two tickets, less than a thousand dollars to get down to Cancun, I, I, I can tell you it's going to happen. I'm going to be there. I could yep. probably buy the tickets today and just be done with it. I just didn't pull the trigger yet. So yeah, well, when I, when I get my, when I get my ticket here and I'm staying for, I'm staying for a week. Yeah. So. I'll, I'll, so the company can pick up the three days that they want to pick up, but I'll pay for the other. Yeah, that's days. kind of I what wanna, I was thinking. I, I don't want to rush in and rush out. I, I don't either. I at least want to come in one day before and leave one day later. So maybe there not a go. full week, I, but I want to do that and and enjoy my time. I've never, the only time I've been out of the country is to Canada, and that was just driving out of uh, uh, Glacier National Park into the national right. park just north of there and back then. You didn't have to have a passport to do any of that. So it was essentially the same area but just uh, out of the country but I had a bunch of notes and I already went through them all and so I didn't really have anything else planned to talk about I think we kind of covered it is there anything else you just want to like leave a message for anybody regarding crypto or world crypto life anything you just want to say before we uh, take off and go on with the rest of our day I, I think the only thing I, I want to leave them with is this 
for those of you who are considering getting involved with WCL, the marketing arm, so that you can get the IMC token, which is what it's all about. When you consider the token, there's about 20,000 tokens globally, and there's a new token starting every five minutes globally. So you ask yourself, Eric, what's the difference between what you have and what these guys have? Well, we decided to make sure that we were completely open, honest, and transparent with the world. So we based it in the United States, not the Cayman Islands. Right. Not, not some crazy country you never heard of. We have a CEO that's very, very visible. And when you take those 20,000 tokens and try to just cut out the ones that are not based in the United States, you're down to less than 100 of them. And if you look at those 100 and say, okay, now what's the best tokens for me to buy? And you start looking for a foundation behind it. And you start looking for an exchange that they actually are fueling. You're down to less than six. So we're the top six out of a 20,000. And then you consider the fact that the exchange that we're with, you can get, if you want to, if you choose to, get a Bank of America debit card tied to the exchange so you can convert your cryptocurrency into cash and walk into 7-Eleven by a slurping tank full of gas and walk away. We're the only one out of those 20,000 that I mentioned that has the ability to do that. Our next nearest uh, analog to what we do is the Binance token. You guys can Google that when you guys get off of this. Their token is selling for $300 plus. It had its greatest movement in the last 12 months. 12 months ago, that $300 token was about $17. Oh, Jesus. That's amazing. Right. And our token is 30 cents. Why did the token go from $17 to 300? It's because everybody found out about it. Right. Our token's gonna go from 31 cents to 41 cents to $4 to $14. And then what's gonna happen? Everybody's gonna find out about it. If you get in before they do, you would be multiplying, you have the potential to multiply, multiply what you've done by hundreds, maybe thousands. The people that get in when it's 300 bucks, they might make a nice 15, 20% game and go to 400 bucks. But the people that got in at $3 made all the money. That's the opportunity that Aaron and I are talking about for you all tonight. And so that's kind of what I wanted to impress upon everybody before we left. If they didn't understand anything else, I want them to understand that opportunity there. Amen to that. And I'm so glad that you uh, got me into it, that you cared enough about me to introduce it to me and explain it to me. And you've helped me along the way significantly. And being here, it's been almost, well, it's been six months since we did a video. So it was January 12th yep. and here we are July 19th. We should probably do one sooner, but you and I have been busy and it's been for good reason. So. I, I'm, I appreciate that you would take the time to be here. I appreciate that you would bring that knowledge and that you would uh, bring that knowledge to the people that are listening and to people who might not understand crypto or be involved yet, and even the people who are involved. So thank you for your time. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Aaron. I'm happy to do it. All right. I'm going to let you go. Have a good day. Peace. Thanks, you too. Bye now. Peace. Okay. Bye, bye, bye guys. guys. Have, Have a blessed, blessed day. day. We'll be, be seeing you. We'll be we'll seeing be you seeing soon. You Whatever, Whatever live thing, thing I, do I do next, next. who knows? I've got, got lots, lots of plans. plans. Whoops. Got lots of plans to do more videos on this. I've got, whoops, I've got lots of plans to do more videos on crypto. I keep clicking the wrong thing. And I've got lots of plans to uh, keep helping you guys in any way that I can. But understanding crypto does not need to be the first thing. You just got to tell everybody you know and everybody you don't know. And some will get involved and some won't. So what? Move on to the next one if they won't. That's all you got to do. Tell everybody, even the people you don't know. Peace and love, guys. See you soon. My windows roll down. Let him uh -huh. hit the word as I'm pulling in the town. Pulling in the town. Pulling in the town. Deacon making noise as he's pulling in the town. I know you yeah. ain't afraid to preach. Let your windows what? roll down. Let him hear the word as you're pulling in the town. Pulling in the town. Pulling in the town. Better make some noise when you're pulling in the town. Man, I'm just not ashamed. Got the keys to the gate. I lost my ID. That's why I'm seeking his face. There's no reservation when I'm pleading his case. So the decision is clear. There's no need for mistakes. I don't hide a thing. 
Baby, I'm a Christian rap artist taking over the family business to finish what he started. So I'm the proof that a lie can convert to the truth. You got the power that will change the world. We gon' sing, we gon' shout, we gon' dance, we on top. We don't hide like we got. We got the power that will change the world. Come on. Now I'ma say what I'ma say You can broadcast my faith Don't go put it on display Play some newspaper uh-huh. ad With a full page spread Tell him Jesus what? is alive He was just playing dead And I come on. keep his word right in my mouth So when I spit lyrics Only his words will come out A house yeah. on the hill That cannot be hit He's so marvelous I call them TV Cribs oh, man. People want to clown And they stare like they didn't As Deacon and lift their mom up in prayer Woo. People want to holler out faith When they come to public worship They be hiding their face yeah, People want to bark out Orders to other people's children, but don't raise their daughters. The other hand, the world will not be speak, so we speak with a shout that the world be reaped. The shame, the shame, the same, the wind's in, the wind out, we on top. You got the power that will change the world. We gon' sing, we gon' shout, we gon' dance, we on top. We don't hide life, we got, we got the power that will change the world. We gon' change the world. Many people got a change in our churches. They hear the word rap and assume it's full of curses. I spit verses for the lost and converted. Glued to the fuse with your verdict before you even like heard it. Treat us like my freaks in a circus. Give me some grace so I can stop this. I'm thinking out of the box while you're living in the square. Either scared of what you hear or you're really gonna wear. At the power that we're using. Minister to sinners through the industry of music. We may be called to stand alone in defiance. Slinging our hands, swinging a rock full of science. Just like even in a world. From the giants defying the odds, building a beat, model lions. Open up your mouth, shout it out loud. We're gonna change it from the inside out. Turn up the shame, the same, the wind's in, the wind out. We on top, you got the power that will change the world. We gon' sing, we gon' shout, we gon' dance, we on top. We don't hide like we got, we got the power that will change the world. We gon' change the world. Uh. Yeah.